This is Chris Terrell with Everyday BBA. In this video, we're going to be doing a, we're actually going to be doing a macro that moves uh, data from one worksheet to another worksheet. This is something that you will do a lot as you code. This is something that's very common. The reason you would use this is say, for example, you had a secretary and your secretary was calling your customers and they wanted to get some basic notes and you didn't want your secretary to basically override any of your information. So it's pretty important that you would want to make sure that that data goes over, goes into the place that you want it to, and it's to not be touched by anyone. It just keeps some, it just adds some data integrity. So this is what we're going to do. So the first thing we're going to do is we've got name, email, and phone. That's the data that we're we're adding. Now you could add as much stuff as you wanted, but in this case, that's what you're going to be using, and you just want to make sure that that information is over here now couple things I will almost always if I'm storing data I'm gonna store it starting in a one and just do it just like it would be a database table this is this makes it a lot easier if you're coding additional things on top of it so much easier when it's in a date what's in if it's in like a table format so what we're gonna do is we're going to use an ActiveX controller so if you just click on your developer tab you go to insert, you're going to click on the Active X controller button, and we are going to add this button. Now, what this is, is it's an object, and you're going to tie code to this object. This object is tied to the sheet, so typically you're going to have modules. Uh, in this case, this is specific to this sheet. It's going to create a private module, which means that you can't call it from anywhere except for the sheet. So let's make a couple changes. First thing we want to do is we want to go to properties. The reason we want to go to properties is because you don't want it to be called command button one. So I'm going to call this update because that's what we're going to do with that data. You'll notice that it writes it down here. The other thing that I would do uh, typically, I'm not going to do it in this case, is I would actually rename this so this, this made sense. Because if you do command button one and then you do command button two and three, it just ends up getting confusing. So I will typically rename those. I will not in this case um, just because it will be simpler simpler when you use this code, um, you won't run into issues where you get an unknown object error because you have looked for it and it Excel's like, I don't know where that object is. So anyway, all right, so we've named that, we've named it update. Uh, quick other word, uh, quick other thing on ActiveX controllers, they don't work with Macs. So if you have a Mac, you would actually need to use a form control which is a little different, um, or just a button that assigns a macro to it. It's the same um, same basic concept, but it is it, it would be a, where your code would go would be a little bit different on a Mac. So now what we want to do is we want to view code, and you'll notice that it gives a private sub, which means it's tied to this sheet. It's tied to sheet one, and it's a command button underscore click. So when I click that button, it's going to execute this code. Now the first thing we want to do um, on this sheet, it's very easy to move that information from one, sec one sheet to another, but we need to know what row to put it on. Now there's a couple ways that you can do this. You could create a function that said, hey, I want to count all of the open, uh, the non-blanks, that's going to give me one, then I would add to it. You could come down here and you could hit control up. That's another option. Um, there are quite a few options that you can do. I'm going to show you my favorite uh, my favorite is the use of the um, current region. And the current region, if you go into any data set or data table within Excel and you hit Control A, it's going to highlight that um, region. Uh, it's going to highlight the current region, which is why it's called that. So let me show you. If I put a 5 in here, I put a 5 in here, and I put a 5 in here, and I come in here and hit Control A, what it's going to do is it's going to select from A1 all the way down to C4. So I'm going to hit Control A. That is my current region. Now all I need to do from that current region is figure out how many rows I have and then add one and then I'm good. So let's delete those. Let's go back to my code. So the first thing we need to do, I'm going to call ERW or end row. And I'm going to make that equal to sheet 
2. Now sheet 2 is the code name. Um, sheet 2, I could also do sheets and then do double quotes and then uh, do sheet 2. I typically like to use the code name, which is this guy right here, because the only person that's going to change that is going to be me. So anyway, so we're going to go sheet.cells and then we're going to go 1, 1. You could also do range A1 and then we're going to do current region dot row. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you real quick on my immediate window what this is going to give me. It's going to give me one because I only have I only have one row in sheet one, and as I add, um, it's going to add up. Now I don't want to I don't want to copy over row one, so I need to add add a single row, which would be row two, which is exactly where I want to load that data. So now it's really kind of it's really pretty simple. We need to grab that data, and so to grab that data, we're going to go. Um, first thing what we're going to do is we're going to go sheet two dot cells erw comma one is equal to, and we're going to do range, and it's going to be d twelve. Now I don't need to do sheet one dot range d d12, and the reason I don't have to do that is because I know that this code only act only runs when it's on this sheet. So we're gonna go like that, and then all we have to do is copy this a couple more times, and then the nice thing is this is gonna be two, this is going to be three, that is going to be d13 and 14 and so what this code does is it takes whatever's in range and it moves it to um, sheet D13 so a couple uh, really that's all that th this is a completed solution right here I could just click update and we would be good to go now I want to add a couple other pieces to here and let me just show you how it works if I type in my name Chris spell at everydaybba.com and my phone number that's funny he's so smart sometimes 208 555 all right if I click update um, it will actually copy that information over now there's a couple things that it doesn't do currently so we're going to add in those extra pieces the extra pieces are delete that stuff once you've updated it we could actually throw in a message box if we wanted. Um, the other thing is we're going to make something required. So we're going to do that with an if statement. So we've got a couple other pieces that we got to clean up, but we should be good to go. And let me just show you how this works. I'm going to hit, I'm going to put in a breakpoint here. Just, high, just click, left click in anywhere in this bar and it's going to give you, it's going to stop that code when it gets to that line. I'm going to click update. It stops it and I'm going to hit F8 through each one of these. So now I'm on two. You'll notice that that's Chris, and it's going to paste that over here. So I'm going to go F. Now I'm going to double check it. Now I'm going to go back to that sheet. Now if I went to that other sheet, it would pull from range D13. So if I hit F8 in here, um, it would actually put in a blank because range D13 is not equal to anything. But I'm not going to be doing that while the code is executing, so I don't have to worry about that. So we run that again, run that again. Perfect. It's just been, it's been added. Now let's just give it one more. Let's go back here and let's make sure that it it. Uh, let's see, F8. I'm going to click that again. And really, all I want to do is just make sure that this is working. For some reason, that is a little odd. That is weird. It's not working. Row. Okay, 
So, wow, that's kind of a rookie mistake. So what I was doing is it was passing in the cell, the top row of that. So I did, I did need, to, need to make that change. This will solve that problem, and it does. Um, in this case, I'm counting the rows instead of just going to row whatever that first row is and adding one to it, um, which always amazes me. Is the more that the more that you learn, the more you just you just kind of bonk your head at times. So we are good to go now, um, and you'll notice that it copies everything like it should. So now what we need to do is we need to clear out these these range cells, which is really easy. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in here, and I'm going to actually just copy this whole thing. I'm going to go like that, just because it's simpler. And then all I need to do on this is equal to quote quote, which is going to put a blank in there, which is exactly what we need. Alrighty, so, which is great. So now what we want to do is we just want to force it to um, have a name, right? So the name can't be blank. This is really pretty straightforward. We're just going to put in an if statement. So we're going to go if the length of range D2 is equal to zero, then go to um, E NXT. Now I'm using a go to. Go to is really simple. It just goes to that line that says NXT, and we are good to go there. I need to type in an exit sub. Um, this is one way to do it. The other way to do this is to go in and just say if it's not equal, let's do it this way. Um, I'm backing up a little bit. This is actually cleaner code, so let's make it clean. Um, let me just finish this thought real quick. So if it equals zero, you would need to put an exit sub, and then I would put a message box in here, an SG bot VOX, and that would be using the go to function, and that would work just fine. Um, but in this case, it's really a perfect way to do a if then else if. So we're going to do else, and then we're going to do and if. And we are golden, so if it is not equal to, which is greater than or less than, um, and I need to get rid of this, because if I don't, it's going to yell at me. It's going to say, hey, you got an else without an if. Um, and then this is just going to be an MSG box. And this is, you must enter a name. So we should actually be completed. Now, you'll remember that we've got this information in here. I'm going to click Update, and we're going to walk through this line by line. Update. Okay, we fixed our, we fixed our code here. We're on row 3. If the length of that is greater than 1, and all LEN is is the number of characters, and so in this case, LEN is actually going to give, give you 5 because there's 5 characters in my name. Copy, paste, copy, paste, move, move. Clear out, clear out, clear out, and we're good. Now let's try to run it without anything. And it's going to say, wait a sec, this is zero. Let's go to our else. You must enter a name. Now let's just make sure that it works correctly. So I'm going to do, I'm just going to say Jeff. It doesn't really matter. Click on that and it updated and you'll notice Jeff got loaded we're going to put in Joe and then we're going to click update and you'll notice that all that information is updating as we needed so that is a quick tutorial on how to move and or copy data from one sheet to another sheet this is something that you will use a ton Hope you enjoyed. Make sure that you subscribe to the Everyday VBA channel. If you like this video, make sure that you add a like to it and leave your comments. Hope you enjoyed.